Okay, that took me some time. Well, as you can see, I've actually put the uh, positive to the uh, white cable, which is actually the child vote. Okay, let me just twist this around. Now, as you can see that this is green, the second one is green, the third one is red, and the fourth one is blue. Okay, let me just stretch this here. <clears throat> so okay, you can see the colors. So if I touch the um, ground, right, to the second pin, it will be green. Okay, at the background. And if I touch the third one, it will be red. Okay. If I touch the last one, which is actually blue. So why do I actually have this chart over here? Okay, to telling you that, you know, the first one is actually child vote, green, red, and blue. As often, right, um, I know that a lot of people would just buy the um, industrial, or should I say the commercialized uh, RGB controllers, which pretty costly, I should say. Um, disclaimer, I'm not discouraging you guys to not to actually purchase that. Those are actually uh, professionally done. But people like me, right, I always, I will always go to the cheaper way. <laughs> so this is actually what I got, <clears throat> okay? The RGB controller, which costs about, I guess, USD, or should I say Singapore dollars, two dollars, around there. And of course, you wouldn't want such a bulky thing in your in your computer. So, I took this off, which is actually the circuit over here. Okay, this is actually what you needed. One for the remote control. Okay, the other one is to connect to your RGB. And later on, I I'll show you that it can actually do the uh, Fantex Halo. Now, before I proceed on to the uh, Pentax Halo, right, I will just explain to you um, what is actually going on. Of course, this is actually a 12 volt um, RGB controller. Now, <clears throat> do take note that this does not do addressable RGBs. It will only do um, RGB, that's it. So do take note on that. And for InfoSec, right, for addressable RGBs, right, they are meant only for 5 volts and it comes with 3 pin and not 4 pin okay um, I have that on another session uh, or should I say another video which I highlighted on the RGB strips that I've actually done for my casing itself so you can actually check that video out now um, for the RGB itself right um, since I tell you this is actually the child vote itself right you will need to actually supply um, the power uh, in here now this is where it comes in handy. Normally what I'll do is actually I'll remove this off. Then I probably will just, you know, pack in a Molex at the end, shoulder it. Okay, you might be wondering, hey, how do I know which is positive and which is negative? Okay, simple. On the diagram over here, right, as you can see, okay, the outer layer, okay, or should I say the outer circle, right, when you have the plug, the outer circle is actually a negative sign. And the heart of it, the center piece here, okay, this is positive. Okay, now back to the multimeter. <clears throat> On the multimeter itself, right, what I normally do, right, is to check the continuity. Because this thing here, right, is shoulder to the two points over here. So I'm not too sure which is actually the positive and which is the negative. But I do know that if I were to touch here, right, with the multimeter itself, right, it will tell me that which is positive and which is negative. And this is how I do it. I will set the multimeter to continuity, okay, which is this thing here that has the speaker um, thing. So when I touch the probe, <clears throat> okay, it will give off a sound. So... It doesn't matter which uh, positive or negative because it's actually um, running in, in circles or should I say a cycle. So basically what I'll do, right, I will have one probe touching the center. Okay. One probe touching the center. Okay, then the other one I test which is which. Oh, this is positive. This is nothing. Okay. Positive. Nothing. And of the of course the outer one, right? You can actually test it too. 
but it's kind of difficult for me. So anyway, this is positive and this is negative. So I will de-shoulder everything and I will plug on to this, the SATA itself. Okay. It just happened that I got this uh, from a conversion of the um, <coughs> SATA to a fan. So I just crimp it off. I mean, cut it off. And I'll be shouldering on this circuit board itself. Which later I'll show you the result. Now, having to say this, right? On the SATA itself, how do you actually tell whether is it a positive or a negative? And which cable is which cable? Now, I have an example over here. This is actually a SATA to a fan um, connector. Now, as you can see, right, the fan connector itself, right, okay, it's actually placing only two pins itself. But I do know that for three pin headers, this is actually a three pin header. Okay, as I mentioned to you earlier on, the center one is actually the positive. So having to say this, right, I can actually trace it. Now, this center right, is the uh, positive. So I just trace all the way to the end. Okay, let me just show you. Okay, basically it's just tracing the center. Okay, the center piece here. Oh, okay, it reaches here. So that I know that this is actually positive and this is negative. That's all I need to know. <clears throat> so when I shoulder the point, right, this point here, okay, this here, or should I say, taking the other one which I just cut off, okay, I know this is actually the uh, positive. So trace to the last stretch. This is actually to a positive. So when I shoulder it, right, on the controller itself, okay, as I measured that the back is actually the positive, so I'll sh shoulder the uh, positive to the positive, then negative to the negative. I'll show you later on um, at the final product what happens. Okay, now to move on, right, okay, um, as this is actually meant for standard, um, this controller here right, is actually meant for standard um, RGB strips, okay? They are not meant for those uh, aftermarket like you get from... Um, okay, I'm not going to name the brands. I think you know what are the PC brands. Um, that is actually not PC branded, I should say. <laughs> okay. So this is pretty standard. Um, this is... You can actually get it anywhere. <clears throat> These are the... Um, 12 volts RGBs. Standard ones. Now, of course, in the market itself, right, if you do get off from those uh, PC brands, uh, kind of RGB strips and things like that, right, they have what they call it proprietary um, connectors. That's why you need to actually get their controllers, which is true. But um, for me, right, um, there's, there's a way to actually check out what is actually going on. Okay, especially um, if you know how you make use of the multimeter, which is quite handy. Now, Imagine this halo here, okay? Now, you might be saying that, um, what kind of voltage? Okay, let me just grab this here. Okay, I've actually dismantled one of the halos. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, this is the one I'm actually talking about. I've actually dismantled this to check out um, which are the connection points, which is red, which is green, which is blue, which is shower volts. This is actually, well, I'm actually plugging into the, um, how say it? To, um, to the um, Fentex controller. So I was actually doing the reading, like which giving me from the multimeter itself, like which is giving me the 12 volts and etc. <clears throat> okay, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do it, do it that way, but I found that there's a easier way. Once you know that, okay, this is confirmation um, 12 volts. I've actually done the reading properly on the multimeter itself. So um, be whether 120 mm or 140 mm, sorry. Um, they are actually 12 volts. So having to say this, right, now, going with the basic of um, this, okay, you know that the standard is actually 12 volt fo followed by green, followed by red, followed by blue. So on the Fantex itself, right, <clears throat> okay, let me just prepare here first. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Looking at this, okay? 
so obviously it's telling me that okay um the standard ones right is actually um 12 volt green red and blue but this right is actually uh i only know that this is 12 volt the rest i wouldn't know will the second one be green i wouldn't know will the third one be red i wouldn't know will the fourth one be blue i also would wouldn't know but <laughs> there's a trick okay if you remember my 12 volt uh sorry my 9 volt batteries i will poke this <clears throat> okay into the 12 volts okay so you can see now i probe on the second one theoretically if it's standard right it should give me green but i don't think it will give me green okay as you can see it's giving me blue okay the third one supposedly should give me red but it's giving me green and the last one by right it should be blue but it's giving me red so having to say this right i will do that again okay this is blue this is green this is red so i'll write it down second pin is blue okay this is green and this is red okay now actually i found out the readings <clears throat> as you know the standard here which is actually 12 volt green red and blue but for fantex halos right it's actually 12 volt blue red oh, sorry blue green and red so obviously if you were to use the uh, standard um, controllers okay which is this that comes with the remote control so by switching all these colors right it doesn't tally because they have actually altered in a way or um, they have actually oriented the um, colors differently so having to say this right what i normally do right is okay i will alter over here meaning to say um on my crimping itself right to the uh, halo itself what i'll do is actually okay i'll follow 12 volt then i will bring the uh, <coughs> red cable okay to the last one miss shifting to the last one then the blue to the third one and the green sorry wrong what i'm trying to say is that you know um, rearrange the uh, order so the first one is actually 12 volt okay then the second one blue right i will push over here to the green one and then the green one i will push over to the third and the red i'll push to the last <clears throat> i will show you um later on what i have actually done i'll be doing the crimping and i'll be doing all the uh, necessary adjustment all right so i'll be right back welcome back okay my controller is really done i really taken out this thing okay and to show the my own sata connection <clears throat> now as standard right on the controller itself okay just to show you 12 volt green red and blue 12 volt green red and blue okay so I've done some alteration on this cable itself. Okay, over this side, right, which is actually um, to be plugged here. Okay, so it's white, green, red, and blue. The white one is actually 12 volt, which follow the standard of this. Now, having the Fantex itself, right, um, the halo itself, right, I need to have 12 blue, green, and red. So if you can see here, Okay, I did some alteration. As you can see that the sequence, right, the blue is in fact the second pin. The green is actually the third pin instead of the second pin. <clears throat> okay, let's take this as a marking, all right? Now, this 12 volt is standard, the first pin. The green on the second pin, right, on the Pentax is right, is actually on the third pin. The red um, on the normal standard <clears throat> controller, right, which is actually on the third pin, goes to the fourth pin of the Fantex. Then the blue, right, which is actually the fourth pin, 
will go to the second pin. So I've actually connected. Uh, okay, actually I've powered up my PSU. So just a demonstration. I'm just gonna connect this. Okay. Then with the controller, this side is to the standard connection. This side is to the Halo. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna pop this here. Okay, nice and snug. Okay, then this is actually my fan text. <clears throat> okay. Okay, it's flashing right now. Now the controller itself. If I press on read, oops. If I press on read, you will be red. If I press on green, you'll be green. If you press on blue, you'll be blue. If I press flash, it will just flash. If I press this, you just fade. Okay, I can actually have it <coughs> CN, I can actually have have it pink or maybe you know other colors that I choose to desire. This is white. Okay, flash fading. Okay, better fade. Smooth. So as you can see that <coughs> um kindly note that I'm not discouraging you guys um to not get the commercialized uh, kind of like uh, controllers from the various vendors. Um this does take a great audio as in like to trace um, what voltage it is and where does the uh, as you can see I've actually traced it takes some time and patience. So if you're not comfortable with this, right, um, I would advise you to actually go through the uh, commercial route, which is... Okay, I would advise you to actually get the um, commercialized, uh, or should I say, the same branding controllers, right, that will ease the pain. But if you're challenging enough like me, I will just do this. And this whole thing that doesn't really cost me much, this, is, this SATA cable here is actually free. Uh, which I got it off from one of the uh, fans um, back then. Then this controller here it cost me about two bucks, <coughs> sing dollars. And this here cost me a few cents, probably I would say 40 cents. So overall the controller, it only cost me about less than three bucks. And I'm able to actually have a remote too. So yeah. All right, so that's about it. Hope you guys have actually enjoyed this video. Till then, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.